People always ask me about my Deep Sky Astrophotography setups. Therefore, I've planned to introduce all my Deep Sky Astrophotography setups in the next few weeks and days. So in today's video, I would like to introduce my Whitefield Astrophotography setup to you. So we'd like to talk about all the components that have attached to that specific Deep Sky Astrophotography setup. I would like to talk about whether I can recommend them or not. If you're interested in that, definitely make sure to watch this entire video. But now, let's get started. First of all, I want to mention that this video is not sponsored and not being paid for it. All products shown in this video were purchased by myself, but now I would like to introduce that Deep Sky Astrophotography setup to you. So, I'm using different Deep Sky Astrophotography setups um, between focal length of 50mm uh, and 750mm. But now I would like to introduce that specific Deep Sky Astrophotography setup to you. So, I've been using this. To, uh, this equipment for quite a few years and the basis of this entire deep sky astrophotography setup is this uh, mount here. So this is the HEQ5 Pro go-to mount. So it's a go-to mount which means that I can select the objects I would like to capture. So usually I'm using a hand controller to control that entire uh, setup. Um, but in this case, I'm using an Astro computer, but I'll like talk about that one later on. So this uh, mount is um, definitely a bit too big for that entire setup, but that's definitely not a problem because I'm usually using a bigger telescope, but um, that one is definitely okay. So I've removed the original counterweights because they are a bit too heavy for that small deep sky astrophotography setup. So I've uh, attached other ones here at the front. So uh, they came with my Presser Pollux telescope. Um, they are around two and a half kilograms, I think, and they are not that heavy compared to them that come with the HEQ5 Pro go-to mount. On the top of that, I've attached my imaging setup. So you can see these two pieces here. So I'm using them to attach my lens and my camera to it. So they came with my guide scope. So on my big astrophotography setup, I'm using a guiding system and I've removed the guide scope and attached, I've attached uh, my lens and my camera to it. And I'm so happy that this works because uh, it really looks great and it definitely works. And I've captured quite a few uh, images with that specific astrophotography setup and it definitely works. I'm able to achieve a long exposure images. The camera at the back is the Canon EOS 2000D. So it is a DSLR camera if, with an APC sensor. It's not astro modified which is a, a problem when capturing uh, objects that include a lot of H alpha. So when capturing the Andromeda galaxy, for example, or the Pleiades star cluster, that's not that a big problem because they, they do not include that much of H alpha. But when capturing objects such as the hard nebula, that's definitely a problem because they include a lot of H alpha and therefore that's definitely a problem. But I'm usually capturing um, the objects, including the Pleiades star cluster, so all of those objects are okay, but I'm definitely planning to buy another camera for the future in order to be able to capture those objects that include all of H alpha. Um, the lens I'm using is the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens, um, so it's definitely a cheap, great lens for astrophotography. I'm always recommending this, spe this specific lens for astrophotography um, because it's definitely beginner friendly. So if you'd like to start into astrophotography and if you do not want to invest that much of money, this is definitely a great deal because it's not that expensive and you can definitely get your first steps into astrophotography and the results are definitely okay and good. And therefore I'm still using that lens, although I have a big expensive telescope for astrophotography. So I'm still using that specific lens for my wide field astrophotography. So um, that specific lens has a focal length between 75 and 300 millimeters. So when using that specific um, lens, I recommend using a focal length between 75 and 135 millimeters because when using a uh, focal length between 200 and, th and 300 millimeters, which is the maximum focal length of that specific lens, usually the star quality is not that good. So I've made a few tests using that specific lens. I've captured test images with a focal length between 75 and 300 millimeters. And when capturing um, images at 200 to 300 millimeters, the stars are very big, not that sharp, and in general the image quality is not that good. But when using 75 millimeters up to 135, that's definitely okay. You will achieve great results when capturing deep sky objects in the night sky, definitely. But I would definitely recommend to not use the maximum aperture of that specific lens. So when the maximum aperture is f4, I would rather go to f5 or f5.6 because that definitely helps you to get better images when using that lens. And that definitely helped me to achieve great results using that specific setup. So right now I'm showing a few images I've captured with that specific lens. And as you can see, you can definitely achieve great results when using that lens for deep sky astrophotography.
At the front of that entire setup, I've attached the CW ASIO Pro. So this is an Ash computer that allows me to control the entire setup. So usually, um, this telescope and uh, this mount comes with a hand controller. I've replaced that uh, hand controller with the CW ASIO Pro because that helps me to control the entire setup. So as you can see uh, with the cables, I can control the mount, so I can select the framing I would like to capture, then the mount is, is moving towards their object, and furthermore, uh, I'm using this uh, Astro computer to control the mount and the lens. So the entire astrophotography setup is controlled by this uh, CW Ace AR Pro. When using my big astrophotography setup, I'm controlling um, the guiding system as well, but in this case, I'm usually using a focal length between 75 and 300 millimeters. In that case, I do not need a guide scope because in that range, that's not that necessary. But when using a bigger telescope, such as my Newtonian telescope with a focal length between um, 750 millimeters or even higher, auto guiding is definitely something you need. Um, so that's um, the entire deep sky astrophotography setup I'm using for my wide field astrophotography. So I'm definitely really, really happy with that specific deep sky astrophotography setup. So that's definitely setup I'm using quite often, especially when there are only a few hours of total uh, clear skies. Then I'm usually using this deep sky astrophotography setup because it's very easy to set that up and it's very easy to use because uh, the focal length is not that high and it's not that heavy. So I definitely recommend that one if you have any more specific questions on the camera, on the CW Acer Pro or on the lens or on the mount, definitely make sure to ask me down below in the comments. And if that video was helpful or informative to you, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.